Kanye and I are at the March for Our Lives rally in Washington, D.C. These marches are happening all across the country, and I really have always advocated for better gun laws and gun control, so I'm really happy that we are supporting and being a part of something that's really powerful. We're tired of being forced under the rug. We're Telling tired of story. seeing the faces of victims exposed. Because their friends maybe died, or their family members died from guns. From guns? Yeah. That's not okay. That's why we're here, is to tell everyone it's not okay to kill people with guns, right? I knew hearing these kids speak was gonna be hard and really emotional, but I didn't know that it was gonna be so inspiring. I think I finally feel like there's a little bit of hope in this world if kids like this are our future. And I hope that North one day remembers that her dad and I brought her here, and I hope that she just remembers that she was a part of something positive that was happening to change the world for the better. My name is Yolanda Renee King, granddaughter of Martin Luther King and her Like all these people that are just roaming the streets, do they not want to come and stay here? There just aren't enough shelter beds in LA. So 47,000 people are on the streets, and there's only wow. 12,000 shelter beds to go to. This is the worst man made disaster in the United States. Over 2,000 people living on our sidewalks, and you know, people say they want people to get off the streets. There's nowhere to go. I can tell you recently what's causing it to skyrocket is the cost of rent. Rents have gone up 30%, salaries have gone down 3%. It's like a perfect storm yeah. of homelessness, especially in LA. This year, we have 55% more people under our roof. And do you guys have the space for that? We've made space. We never turn away a woman because there's 800 registered sex offenders on the streets, so our hearts won't let us. The homeless issue is a full epidemic, and I don't know what the answer is to get people off the streets, but, you know, I'm so willing to help in any way that I can. Today, I have an amazing party plan to support the Alexandria House, a long-term shelter for women and single moms. We are partnering with companies like Priv and Cost Plus World Market to provide some great products and services. And I just want to bring awareness to this issue because I feel like there's a lot that can be done in our community and it starts with just getting the information. Hi. Hi. I'm Caroline. How are you? How nice to meet you. Oh, of Come course, of course. Hi. Hi. How are you? Director. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yes, yeah, so glad that you're here. Oh. Can I get everyone's attention just for a moment, please? Um, we just want to thank you, Kim, for bringing your amazing crew to here for Alexandria House. Alexandria House has been here for 21 years. As you know, LA is the homeless capital of the United States. The rising population is women and children. Alexandria House, we're just a drop in the bucket of what the good that we can do to eliminate homelessness. We really appreciate you being here and casting some attention on this incredible issue that's impacting so many. I definitely take my role as Smile Train's ambassador very seriously. And it's just, it's something that I feel really strongly about. And after I learned more and more about these kids, I just got more and more into it. That's such a gift that you come here to do this. I'm so proud of you. Yeah. I really am. Couldn't do it without you. I think. Uh, 
showing this on the show will be really awakening for a lot of people because I didn't even know about this. It feels great that the money I donated is actually doing something good and I'm changing the lives of so many kids. I I'm just overwhelmed. Okay, I'm getting out of here. It made me realize how not important my daily struggles are. I think you're three young ladies that can make a big difference in just shining that light and doing something with your life and your time. And I think that's the message, is that you can encourage other people to do the same thing. Yeah. I think our 20s are going to be a very powerful, amazing time for us. We haven't even hit 20 yet. Not even 20. This is the first time, really, I am doing what I want, I'm finding what I'm passionate in, and just my lane and my path in life. I'm just so not cute. <laughs> no, no, like, not either. Yeah, yeah, like, we're not supposed to be. Hey, everybody. Look how good it looks. It's amazing to know that the money that I'm donating is actually doing something and changing lives. So that's what we'll see today. It looks today, so good. <laughs> this is very overwhelming. I know. Sorry. But it is heartbreaking to know that there are so many people who just don't have the resources. Okay, then you need to meet Mia. How old is Mia? Three months. Three months yes. old. Oh, Mia. What a little cutie. Hey. Hi, how are you? <laughs> you okay? You're good. Yeah. 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 Nice to meet you. Kylie alone has helped over 1,300. That's crazy. Yeah, 34 children. Okay. 34? Southern yeah. yesterday. Wow. Justin Mayo is the executive director of a nonprofit organization called Red Eye. He was given the keys to the Watts Community Center, which is at risk of being shut down. He wants to keep it open and make a place for all the kids in the community to go. We got to do something to help create a safe space. Yeah. So wow. I brought a couple photos of the facility so you could see the magnitude of what it's okay. looking like. Like one of their basketball hoops inside the gym, it was shot out three years. It's never been replaced. There's like mold growing on the walls. Like I see mice crawling oh. around. They have a little kitchen. The kitchen's falling apart and we gotta get them a better like computer lab. Cause I've never one time seen a kid working on schoolwork. Yeah. I'm envisioning not just a community center, but actually something that's gonna empower them. So what would you do with the field outside if they had an outdoor play area? Wouldn't yeah. that be good? Oh, it'd be incredible. There's endless possibilities. These kids are some of the most incredible genius kids. We just gotta give them an opportunity. I'm really excited about all the progress that's being made and I'm so optimistic that this is going to make the community a better place. Hi, Hi how are you? Chris. Bruno Marquesi. Nice to see Very you. Very nice thank to meet you. Thank you so much for being a part of this. No, thank you. It's so amazing. It's about giving kids safe places to play right? and the opportunities to be successful. That's what it's about. Kids, they honestly think they're born and are gonna die here. We had one person uh, that was shot and killed uh, one block away uh, two weeks ago. And then last week, uh, maybe 12 blocks away, there was two people shot and killed and six, uh, no, six shot, two killed. Some of our kids in our community, either they father in prison or deceased. I lost two kids in 60 days. That's how I met Justin. This is a dream. Whatever we wanted, you did it. And I just want to say thank you for everything and working hard with Yane and his staff and with Red Eye. We're so proud to be a part of this. So thank you for allowing us to be a part of your family. This is Kendall's house, because all of us are evacuated from our homes. My mom, my sisters, everyone's coming. They're oh. so excited to meet you. We are really looking forward to this. Yeah, I'm Aww. looking so forward to this. Let's go in the so, kitchen. Let's okay. hang out. Let's get it going. When you left after, I want to cry right now. I don't know why. I'm just kidding. When you left, what did you have after 20 years to bring home? You can't have anything that you came in with. Okay. What you saw me run across the street really? in was all that you had. Exciting things are happening for you. 
If it wasn't for that, were you thinking about getting a job? Yes. And how yes. would mm -hmm. that have happened? Because I have heard that is like the hardest thing to do. I know people. That was one of the reasons that many of them came back to prison. They could find jobs, and they returned to what they knew. When I was pleading your case to the president, I was like, she has family uh, mm -hmm. that she can live with, and she has job offers. Mm -hmm. So that was like a huge thing, as I had to say, she has a job offer. I really didn't realize how you know, that these products weren't regulated. Now I feel like I need to look up every kid product that I'm yeah. using. I've so done it way. before, yeah. but I feel like it's like you constantly have to be doing it. And like, even if it says natural, yeah, that's crazy that that doesn't be, mean that. That scares me right? so yeah. much. And like the color of the bottle doesn't matter. And like a lot of people yeah. are like, oh, it looked really natural. Yeah. Yeah. It said recycled. And just because it's recycled doesn't mean that actual chemicals inside of it are good for you or for the environment. We realize that most people don't know that personal care products aren't very regulated. I just thought that all the products on store shelves met this oh, very vigorous yeah. standard. That's not required now. Right now, we as consumers are all the guinea pigs because yeah. these products aren't tested. Wow. That's really scary. And also, when you look at the European laws, there's more than a 1,000 ingredients banned or restricted versus the 11 here. In that disparity care it. is just too, it's too striking. It's crazy that it's up to us to really do the research and figure it out, you know? So maybe just to start, maybe you could talk a little bit about when you first became concerned about the chemicals and cosmetics. Um, well, <clears throat> when I had my first son, I started learning a lot about the foods that, you know, I was giving him, and then it snowballed into learning a lot about products. And, you know, I would find out that they had a lot of harmful chemicals. To me, it was just really shocking that you could buy baby products and products for children that are not safe. It shouldn't be up to parents or consumers, really, to have to do that much research. Right. You know, it's time that Congress does its job. Yeah, there you go. I never really thought that I would be here speaking in front of Congress and Senate. We're still plugging away on this issue, and thank you for your advocacy. Yes. Really appreciate We're it. We're so happy to be here. I feel like I'm getting my points across well, and people are really understanding why it's so important. Uh, you know, I have two daughters, you know, as they were growing up. They always assumed that if they were buying something, somebody had looked at it and mm -hmm. said it was safe. And when I tell them that that's not true, they're like, how can that be? Yeah. I was nervous, but I'm just happy that I could be here to lend my voice and hopefully make a difference.